Hello again, lovely people. Our remote is done. I have one little glitch and one little task. Once it finishes up booting, <clears throat> I'll run through everything with you guys. Right now, as you've seen in a previous video, perhaps I'm just displaying the controls on these two screens because it's not coded yet completely to work with Nova. But let's review. So up here we have our power switch. It is a two poles, oh sorry, single pole two throw switch, which means to the left side we have power to the device. If I switch it to the right side, it will allow you to charge the battery through the JST port. That is one of my tasks. This was a bad design, not thought out good. Mine's just loose in there right now. That's why it looks crooked. I'm probably going to end up gluing mine in. But if you guys hang out a bit or help out a bit, we can figure out a way to mount that much better. Um, long story short, I ended up with going with a female JST connector because of the way that that hole is. And uh, I don't know, it was a mess. Probably should have never used a JST connector to start with. Anyhow, that being said, that's the one of the two things that needs attention. Okay, so after that we have our four buttons here. One, two, three, four. And that's the way that I number them in code as well. Because I can tell you guys right now, I got all my buttons right, but I mixed up two of my pots, the wiring. So I will have to go in my code, well I already did, and swap out two of the pin numbers. Hopefully you guys that are building this know enough about code to be able to do that yourselves. Because there are a lot of wires and a lot of connections as you've seen in my previous videos. I did take a bunch of photos as I assembled it, so I'm going to do a kind of an instructables page on the website. So you'll see how chaotic that wiring was. Okay, then we have five RGBs up there. Then we have our two joysticks. Uh, you may have heard me say I did not code the push buttons on them because I think they're unreliable and I don't really think we need them. And they're also not wired up. Then we have four slide pots. Again, one, two, three, four. And then we have two buttons, which will be used for moding and changing and starting and stopping and select and that kind of stuff. And if we ever do a menu, these will probably navigate the menu as well. Okay, so yes, buttons. So here's one, two, three, and four. And you can see on the screen, I kind of put a dot where they're located. And of course, you can push all four at once as well. Then our two joysticks. That's the left joystick. And then the right joystick. Ooh, why am I not getting... Huh. Why can't I get that right green light on this joystick? So yeah, calibration is something we'll have to deal with too. Um, there was somebody else who built a uh, remote for Nova, but he hasn't built a Nova yet. And uh, he has a pretty cool calibration script for the joystick, so I will probably get with him. Mano, I'll be reaching out to you pretty soon. Uh, he has a cool, um, again, calibration script that helps you calibrate the joysticks. And I think that'll be the same for the pots because they're really the same thing. Okay, and then yes, we have our pots. So herein lies my second problem. So these two pots, for some bizarre reason, from zero to middle, all I'm getting is zero. And then I get only half my register in the top half. Very peculiar. And you can see they don't even respond all that well. So I may have miswired or shorted something out there, or not sure, but these two work fine. As you can see, that one goes all the way up. And that one goes all the way up, nice and smooth. But yeah, something's up with these two. I'm not sure what it is. But they almost just go from zero to pin. Very strange. So I'll figure that out. That's the only other bug that I have here, guys. Otherwise, here's the other two buttons. And that's it. We're good to go. We can press all this fun stuff at once if we want to. Wee so, yes, next stage. Fix the problem with these pots. I'm not going to worry so much about this JST right now because, yeah, it's a functional thing, but it's going to require reprinting the back, I think. 
Jordan, if you're out there, <laughs> let's put some mechanical thought into how the heck we mount that much better. Um, FYI, I, beneath this JST, all along here, actually, you could probably see it through here. Yes, that white, white that you see, that's a piece of foam that I stuck in here, right across the whole bottom. So the battery sits on that and doesn't push on the JST wires because the JST sits right on my piece of foam. So I am thinking we probably should backfill this whole piece here with plastic to give that JST something to support to and are not attached to. But we'll figure it out. We'll work on that, guys. So, yeah, if you guys are anxious like me and still want to go ahead and build it, be my guest. Everything's ready to go. I will release the code. Oh, not the code, sorry, but uh, not yet. <laughs> Hopefully by next weekend we'll have some code. I know I'll have code talking to Nova by then. I'm very anxious to do that. I should mention that is the one component I have not tested yet is the NRF. Let's hope it works, because if it doesn't, you may see this in pieces in my hand next time from me smashing it against the wall, but we'll see, guys. So, yeah, it came out pretty good. I'm a little bothered how the heck we missed this alignment here um wondering if i'm using an older back piece that's possible although the alignment's off the same amount here so it almost feels like this back piece needs to slide up just a tiny bit which means these holes are not aligned but jordan again we went through that and i think we both confirmed the holes were well aligned so perhaps I'm using an older version of the back or even, you know, the depending on the PLA you use and the position you printed. Ah, that's it, guys. So I reprinted my front and I was propagating for you guys to print everything standing up like that. But for my front this time, I decided printing it like that on my bed. But my back was printed standing up. So because it was printed standing up, it drooped. A good two millimeters as it printed would be my guess that's why it's a, not the right size and shape just off a little bit even this these directions it seems to be drooped a little bit because it's just at the bottom points top points are fine so yeah that's my guess guys maybe printing up like that is a bad way to be honest there's really not much difference well let me back that up to be honest this is the better way to print them because you can see the bottom, that's the, the, really the only difference. The bottom of the black one was printed sanding up, so it had support under there, so now it looks like heck. And of course, I don't sand or file down my prints much at all, if ever. This one came out beautiful. Oh yeah, Jordan, one more issue. I made the mistake of asking you to move that hole down nine millimeters, I think I asked you. Oops. <laughs> Too far by about four or five millimeters, so we'll get the exact dimension on that. All right, guys, so those of you who've already printed, don't worry. You can still go ahead and build it, I'm sure. These kind of things you can just cut out like I did for now. If it bothers you, it's really just that and the JST connector. Um, there was issue with the pots, I should mention here, while I have everybody's attention. I had initially specced um, ones that were 6 millimeters wide, which I didn't even notice that there was a difference. I just thought it was the 35 millimeter dimension. But I think it was Steffi went out and bought some and then realized when she got the hers that hers were 8 millimeters wide. So the ones that I had originally spec'd were no longer available on Amazon. It was a heck of a thing to find the 6 millimeter one. So, um, courteous of Jordan, we have two versions, a 6 mil and an 8 mil pot front cover. But I don't think we're going to maintain that, guys. So I... I think I have already changed the part lists to spec the 8 mil part pots, and that's what I suggest you use. Um, what else? I think that's it, guys. So yeah, give me there another week, and I will have Nova in paying attention to our new remote. Let's see, it should run on battery too, right? Hey, that's odd. All right, so let's go ahead and start her up. Not plugged in. So I just tried to do that for you guys, but like a dummy, I had the wrong switch on. That switch is for charging. Switch one is to boot. So there she is, running untethered. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you a little montage of a couple of video clips that I'm going to use for the instruction page that I'll build just to show you what I went through to make this sucker. <laughs> 
Hey guys, so with some of these potentiometers, you can see those little tabs there that stand up in the middle. Uh, they protrude a little bit, which kind of prevents our holding plate from sitting nice and flat on them. So I've gone ahead and chopped mine off, even though they're a little angled. They're pointy now, so they'll dig into the plastic, which may even help, but they're pretty flush as it is. It was a little tricky to get in there with the close cutoffs, but let's see if I could do one of these here on camera. So you can see that top one sticking out there. So that's pretty flush. If it really bothers you, you can come at it from the other side and get the other tip off, I guess, but I think that'll be enough for me to get it nice and flush. So yeah, Make sure you take care of that, otherwise I put my um, holding plate in there and it was rocking just a tiny bit, which clearly indicates it's sitting right on the top of those guys. So while I get these out, you can see how perfectly the holder came out as well. They pop right in there, nice and snug. And then when this goes on top, actually now that I don't have them all cut, but let's go ahead and put this in here anyway while I have the camera on. So you can't have those bolts up, right? I have them pretty much flush at the moment. And then you'll see how tightly this fits right onto that little bit of curve. And then the other side, same thing. And it snaps right into place. Once you have it in there, and once I cut the rest of my tabs, you'll note that it probably doesn't even need the screws. You can see how tight that is, but they'll help lock it into place anyway, and they were there anyway, so cool. And I don't have my other OLED in, or there would be my pins for that, which I'll wire up. And then all my pins from my pots are exposed. I'll wire those to the Mega, which will sit right here. And then obviously these two buttons, and then the four upper buttons. And the joysticks, and <laughs> we're good to go. A lot of wiring, but I already have the Mega with all of its leads all tacked on. I just have to go underneath now and clean it up a bit. And then the way to clean this up is just go ahead and heat those up and put a dab of solder if that, if just not have your soldering tip wet, just to smooth out each one of those, clip them all off and it'll be ready to go. I have to put a couple of threaded inserts into this, tiny shallow ones. And yeah, we're almost there guys. Okay, let's go over the last bit of the front assembly. I wanted to show you all how I plan to do this. So you can see back there on the RGB lights, I have a little piece of foam. I'm going to do the same thing with the OLED screens, which guys was the trickiest part of this whole project to wire up. I really wish I could <laughs> tell you more or show you more, but everybody will probably have to do it the way they feel most comfortable doing it. So it does fit right in there. The screen snaps right in, not too tight because that would not be good for the OLEDs. And then yes, I'm gonna put these two little pieces of foam. Um, right now I'm not gonna glue anything down. I probably will, probably will end up putting just a spot of glue on these guys or some double-sided tape just to keep them in place. Though they should stay in place anyhow. Okay, now let me zoom in a little bit here and this is the tricky part. So we have this chase here, which is meant for the OLED screens, and then the wires will come out here to be plugged into the board, right? Uh, every other wire has to stay where it's gonna come up through, and this guy's gonna go on there nice. So we have to chase these four wires through this here. And then, as long as I'm careful not to move my padding around too much, should go right there. And there we go. So, yeah, my wires are a little in the way there, but not bad. They're not being pinched. 
We're down and seated as far as we can. I just gotta put the screw on to hold this one in place. And yeah, good to go. Now what we'll do is move these wires down here to run through this chase. We'll deal with this later. And then you can see the two threaded inserts. The Mega will sit right there with a couple of screws. Obviously I have to move a few wires around just to get it to seat properly right there. And then, yes, the final step is to connect. I still haven't counted how many pins we're using, how many connections I have here to make. But what would you guys say? I think that there's at least 25, 30 connections there to make. I have one tiny JST connector left to put onto these two short yellow wires. Then a bunch of ground and five volt to connect to my little block up there. Then yes, we have six switches, two joysticks, four pots, RGB, and two OLEDs to connect. So stay tuned guys, we're gonna be done with this really soon. Hey everyone, after a day of wiring, we are almost there. All parts fit nicely, all wiring is almost ready to go. The Mega has all of its wires attached to it. Just gonna pop that in place, finish up the wiring, wire up the main switch, and close her up. So we should be seeing Nova walking with the remote any day now. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, so like, share, and subscribe, stay tuned, and Nova will be walking with the remote next time. Take care.